Alright, so in this video we're going to see how to get started with Sage. Go to search engine and type in Sage Cloud. Get access to the cloud version of Sage. Sage Math Cloud. It's so cloud.sagemath.com. You can download Sage, but this one's nice because you don't have to download anything. And it's a free service, but you do need to create an account. We're going to go ahead and create an account. Let's put in a name. And put in email address. And then choose a password. And hit sign up. Now, before you can actually go in and mess with anything, you need to create a project. And you create a different project for each class you're doing, though this may be the only time you use it. Let's go ahead and create a project for this class, Math 279. So give it a title and go ahead and create the project. And then click the Start Project button. create your own file. So say you get started with the first assignment, lab E1, and we're always going to be using Sage worksheets. And here's your blank worksheet. Now, all the code you want to get is probably just going to be copied and pasted from the existing code I provide. So going to the course site, so you look at the first experience. Go ahead and pull up the intro to Sage code. And we can now copy and paste code that we want to use. So uh, try copying. And then pasting the code. I recommend running the code before you change anything to make sure it works good. And uh, you'll get lots of red error messages if it doesn't work. And you'll probably get a nice answer if it does work. But it should work. Let me know if it doesn't. Then you want to go in and change your problem. So go ahead and change the comments, change the code. The comments are indicated with the orange and using the pound symbol. And the regular code is in black right there. And it only counts lines that are having code. So it doesn't count this. So line one is actually here, and line two is there, and line three is there. Now with the first assignment, you're going to do a couple things. And one is to verify a solution, so you'd be modifying this code. So find the problem you're doing, say section 1.26a. This is section 0.2 here. There's the problem, 6a. And go ahead and put this differential equation in and put in this as your possible solution. So writing those down, you can compare what's here. This is the differential equation. This is the second derivative. So you just need to change this part. And then this is the possible solution, just the right-hand side. So modifying those, you should be able to problem, so we'll do one similar. Right. Let's do the one below it. So you notice that with this problem you need to subtract the fraction 
to get everything on one side. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's the differential equation. And we're trying to check that x squared over 3 plus x minus 1 is this solution. And that would go here. Should be able to put those in and check that that works. Now often it won't simplify for you. Or you can put in commands to tell it to simplify. And through the simplification and expand commands, uh, it does go to zero. So getting a zero lets you know that it is a solution. Now in the next part, we're trying to get a a direction field with some solution curves. So this is 1.3 number 16. See, with these problems, we have the differential equations, but we don't have the solution to use to get the integral curves. So for number 16, I, the one I want you to do, I've given you the solution curves. Uh, the equation of the solution curves is given by that. And you have the differential equation. So I'm going to go through a problem where we have the differential equation and the answer so we can actually do that. Because of that, I'm going to do one from 1.2. So let's take a look at number two, E. Here's your differential equation. And here are the solutions. Now we're going to modify code that's given uh, down here. So let's copy and paste that. And let's change the differential equation is y prime equals x squared times 1 plus y squared. And the solutions are tangent of x cubed over 3 plus c. So we declare our variables with that first line. We can leave that. And here where we plot some of those solution curves. So you want to change this part right here to match up with your solutions, in this case, tangent of x cubed over 3 plus c. Now, you can use lowercase c or big C. I use the lowercase c here. Whatever c you use there, make sure it's the same c there. 
and then you're going to want a certain range for the graph. Now in your problems this is actually specified in the instructions, um, but we'll just go ahead and do say negative 1 to 1. And then the range for C is something you sometimes have to fool around with. Uh, we'll see how to change that, but just try to start off with negative 5 to 5. For the slope field, we go ahead and put in the right-hand side of the differential equation. So that will go there. And then there's the x and the range. And we're not going to do the special solution for this one, so we can get rid of that. And just show i and d. i for integral curves, d for direction field. So here's what an error message looks like. And here's how to debug. Find out what line you're in. Line 2 means right here. And then look for some kind of mistake. In this case, There's some mistake with the tangent function command. And you can see that I opened up a set of parentheses here and did not close them there. So it was a matter of closing the right parentheses. Um, you can also see if you're missing a parenthesis, then the one that you don't use will be in red. So there's a red one. That lets you know there's an error. But I opened a set of parentheses for the tangent, and I forgot to close it. So that was my mistake. Try running again. And we see that we have some asymptotic behavior, which is to be expected with tangent. So this looks like it's happening right around here. Let's go ahead and avoid that area. And maybe just go out to Zero point five. Much better. And it seems like we can go further out, just not as far as we did go. So maybe 0.75. So you want to fool around with changing. This second line changes the blue lines, and the third line is the slope field. The slope field looks really good, so I wouldn't change that. But we're just changing the length of those blue lines and then that looks much better. And we can continue making it look nicer, maybe go to 0.9, and then maybe make this go up higher to match it. And you can see there's that one that's kind of causing trouble. Let's get rid of that one. That's probably when it's five, so maybe just go to four. Maybe it was when it was negative 5. Yeah, it was the negative 5 one. So now we can probably go back to 5 to 5. And there's a really nice picture there. Okay. So that's what we're looking at for the first assignment. Now you want to submit this, and the way to do that is to hit this button here to convert to PDF. Tell it to generate the PDF. It'll probably try to pop up, so if you have a pop-up blocker, it's going to block it. If you don't, it should pop up. You don't really want to print it. Um, you want to save it. You can print it off. It's got the code and it's got your pictures. And then go ahead and hit download and go ahead and save it somewhere on your desktop. And then you want to go to submit it. Now you go to submit it here, hit lab E1. 
and choose your file, and then pick the lab you want, and then hit submit. Now you won't see a grade until I get a chance to go in and grade those, but that sums up how you do a, a Sage lab.